Today we're going to talk about how to install the Ender 3 display on the Big Tree Tech Octopus Pro. Now just keep in mind that the Octopus Pro is similar to the Octopus version 1.1. So the process is going to be the same except for the chipset. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pop out the drive over here for the SD card and put it in our card reader and place this in the computer. Then I'm going to show you the actual back of this. As you can see, there's EXP 1, 2, and 3. And over here we have EXP 1 and 2. So we want to connect to EXP 3 and EXP 1 down here. So we're going to take our ribbon cable and we're going to connect to EXP 3. We're going to flip this over and we're going to connect EXP 1 over here. So I'll leave that with the cable folded out over here. And we'll go over to the computer in just a second, but I want to show you zoomed in what the chipset is. As you can see, right up here, it says STM32F44, and then there's a 6. That is going to be the chipset that we need to worry about. So let's go over to the desktop. And on the desktop, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Explorer. Then we're going to go to Open Folder, our Downloads folder. And I've already extracted the version of Marlin, which in this case is Marlin 2.0.9.3. So I'm going to select the folder. Inside of here, I'm going to click on the Marlin folder, then the Source folder, then the Core folder, then Boards.h. Inside boards.h, I'm going to do a search on Octopus. And you can see there's three versions of the board. The one that we're interested in is this one right here, which is the Octopus Pro. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy that. Now, as you can see over here, they talk about the chipsets being two versions. We have the F446, but there's an F429. So the process may vary depending upon your board, but in this case, it's going to be the same as the regular Octopus. So we're going to minimize core and then source, go to configuration.h, and we're going to search on motherboard. And what we'll do is we'll highlight the ramps and paste our configuration over it. Then we'll set the serial port to negative one. And then what we need to do is search on CR10. And this is the actual display type. So we'll hit the control slash to remove the comment. And then to set up the actual build, we have to go over to the INI file and we have to find our chipset, which is STM32F4. And inside here, we'll search again on Octopus. And as you can see, there's several in here. So we're gonna locate it by our chipset, which you can see right here is the STM32F446. So we're going to highlight this environment right up here, actually, pardon me, because we don't want the USB version. And we'll right click and we'll copy that. Now, just so you know, the 429 version is down below. So you can see it right here. This is the actual one you want when that chipset becomes available. So we're going to minimize the INI file. Then we'll go over and we'll find platformio.ini and we'll highlight the Mega 2560 for the environment and paste it right here. Then what we'll do is we'll do a clean because the default build is the Mega 2560. So we'll click the garbage can down here. And then what we'll do is we'll click the checkbox and this will build our firmware.bin for us, which is our binary file to install. 
Now this may take a few moments and if there's a failure, you may need to click the checkbox a second time. And if it does repeat after that, what you wanna do is find the very first error in red here and correct it. Now, if you have trouble correcting the actual issue, there is a Discord page that'll be in the description that you can join. There's over 600 people that can help you. So let's give this a moment to see what happens. And at this point, I wanna thank my uh, sponsors on Patreon and also PayPal for all the uh, financial backing they've given me in order to make these tutorials. So now that the build's complete, we can go to the .pio folder, then the build folder, and then down here you should see the octopus, which we'll click on, and inside here we'll have firmware.bin. So we'll right click on this, we'll go to reveal and file explorer, when this comes up, we'll double check our drive. There's a previous build that's right here. So we'll go back and we'll right click and we'll say send to that drive. Now, if you don't already know this, firmware.bin, or excuse me, is the build before it loads correctly. If it does load correctly, it'll be renamed to firmware.cur. If you ever need to reload it, you can always rename it to firmware.bin like this, and it'll reload. Some people use that for multiple systems, or they use that to load a build from before. So let's go over to the desktop. I'm gonna pop out the drive. I'm then going to place the drive inside here. And then I'm going to place the USB connection in to power the board because currently we have it set for USB power. And this should light up. And any second now we should see that it says Marlin and the version that we're currently working with. So if you want to adjust this or work through it, it should be similar to the Creality by pushing down, you can navigate around and set your configurations and that's all there is to it. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And please wear a mask, get vaccinated, and for my patrons, there will be a thank you at the end of the video. So thank you very much.